Now I'm going to make the cheesecake batter. And because I'm going to show you two different ways of making cheesecake, I'm going to make double the amount of filling. So start with a cream cheese, softened, and add the sugar. And if you're using a stand mixer, use the whisk attachment. That will make it more smooth, and if you don't beat it on high speed, it won't beat too much air into the filling. Start on low. And then you can bring it up to medium, but don't make it high speed. And this is whipped together just until it's smooth and creamy, which only takes seconds. And then you can start adding the eggs. And it's best to add one egg at a time and wait until it's integrated or incorporated into the batter. Then add the next egg. It's okay if two go in together. Now turn it up to medium and beat it until it's smooth. Now I'm adding in some cornstarch. It's very little, but without it, it's more silky and creamy. And then freshly squeezed lemon juice. This is a tart cheesecake. It's sweet. Believe me, it's a dessert, but it's not sugary sweet. Especially when you see the next ingredient that we're adding, lots of sour cream. So I've just added the vanilla at the end. When I add the, the sour cream, there's so much of it, it's easier to do it with a bowl off of the mixer. And if you want to do this huge amount without having a stand mixer, you can do it by hand with a handheld beater, but you really have to have a large enough bowl. So add the sour cream all together. We're not worried here about deflating anything. And then using the same whisk beater, you don't even have to put it back on the stand. Just mix it in. It only takes seconds. Now it's nicely incorporated, and I'm going to put it together. So I've prepared two springform pans, both greased and lined with parchment and sprayed with flour and grease, or greased and floured. And the first I'm going to do the bisquee with the bottom. And I'm using a smaller pan for that one because this bisquee is so thin it hardly takes up any room. You'll notice I keep it covered because I don't want it to dry out when I do my cutouts for the decoration. So I've used the bottom of the pan as a guide and cut around so I would have exactly the same size. And the bisquee gets laid in. Actually, I like to put the crust side down because this is the nice spongy part and it's going to absorb any liquid from the cheesecake. So now it's ready for half the cheesecake batter. And the other pan, this was an 8-inch, this is a 9-inch. And this one is going to have a crown of lady fingers. I think this is the prettiest presentation of a cheesecake. So what I do is I cut off the bottoms. I can either do it with a sharp knife or with scissors. Bisquee actually cuts very well with scissors. And the reason that I've sprayed the pan is because that way it won't stick and I won't lose the nice outside. But if I did, I could tie it with a ribbon. Now, of course, you can pipe these yourself, but store-bought ones are just fine for this cake. And I use whatever lady fingers I have left over for the center. Just the way I had the bisquee bottom, I'm going to now have a lady finger bottom. So they get placed all around, exactly fits in. And this way they don't come too much above the side of the pan so that there's less of a tendency for them to brown and burn. And now, for the center, I can just take the whole ones, cut them apart, and make a kind of daisy all around and fill in with the scraps. Because you never see the bottom. Actually, I like to do them upside down again for the same reason that it's more absorbent on the underneath side. Now I have all of the, the pan is lined with the lady fingers, and I'm going to pour the filling over it. It's really nice having the contrasting textures of the creamy cheesecake and the soft lady fingers after it's baked. I'm going to divide the batter approximately in half. It hardly rises, maybe an eighth of an inch. But I do like to have some room between the filling and the lady fingers so I can top it with strawberries. That makes it like a jewel in the crown. So that's the first one. And then this is the second one that just has the bisquee in it. And then I'm going to wrap each pan in a double layer of aluminum foil. And that way it keeps it from in the water bath. I'm going to have it baked surrounded by water because cheesecake is a custard. 
and you don't want it to curdle. So it's a very even way of baking when you surround it by water, but the water could creep into the springform pan if you just use one layer of foil. So I actually use two layers of heavy duty foil. Doesn't really matter which way, but I, I do it shiny side out so that when it's surrounding it, the shiny side is what shows. Now I'm going to show you how to prepare the pan for baking. I'm setting it in a roasting pan and surrounding it with boiling or at least hot water. And it's going to bake in a preheated 350 degree oven for 50 minutes. But after the first 25, I'm going to tent it with foil because the upper parts of those lady fingers will get too brown if I don't. And then after 50 minutes, I don't open the oven door. I just let it sit for a whole hour. And that way it continues to cook right through to the center very, very evenly. On the biscuit cheesecake, I'm going to do a lemon curd topping. And I have some lemon curd that's just at the point of close to 190 degrees where it starts to curdle. But this way it will be thickened and ready to pour. This should be cold. And then I pour it right through a strainer onto the surface. And that way it will be completely even coating. If you haven't made your lemon curd thick enough, what you have to do is put it back in the oven for five minutes to make it set and then chill it again so you can unmold it. And never put any plastic wrap on top of it at this point because it will cling to it and then all the beautiful even topping will be for nothing. If you have a little bubble, just break it. And now this needs to be chilled before unmolding it. Here is the baked and chilled ladyfinger version. I can now peel away the foil, and I have to apply heat to make the ladyfingers come off cleanly. I think the most beautiful decoration is just whole strawberries placed all around. If you can get small ones, pointy side up is lovely. And if you'd like, you can brush it with some melted currant jelly. That way they glisten. Now the entire crown is filled with berries, and I'm going to unmold it. I could use the hot dish towel wrung dry, but I love these little burners, propane burners, or torches. Where the spring is, I give it a, le a little extra dab because it's thicker there. And this way, having greased and floured the pan, there's a better chance that it will unmold cleanly. It gets a little hot. <laughs> okay, that should do it. I'm going to use pot holders to release it because I really warmed up that metal. And now with a little metal spatula, go around the sides to further ensure that it will come out clean. And lift away the ring. And now we have a lemon cheesecake that's already been chilled. So I'm going to decorate it with biscuit cutouts. Sometimes there are imperfections in the top of a cheesecake. And it's really nice when you pour the lemon curd on it, you don't see it anymore. Also, if there's some lemon curd that's soft and goes over the side, it will attach these. Otherwise, use a little lemon curd to make them adhere. Press them gently against the side. I'm cutting these decorations from the biscuit sheet. It's still on the Teflon paper or the parchment. And if I have this lovely bell cutter. And I have a star cutter. And then I use the spatula to lift it off. And then it's ready to go on the side of the cake. And I particularly like the cookie cutters that are the height that's just a little bit above. So just like the lady fingers, they'll go all around the cake. An angel can be very attractive. This can be a themed cheesecake. So just finish all around the sides, and you have a really original-looking cheesecake. So there we have our cheesecake with biscuit roulade. Two wonderful textures, two wonderful tastes. I'm Rose Levy Berenbaum with Baking Magic.